dancing like guys On the back of my spine Where we going tonight? You know I saw that I In the corner of the light Playing games with my mind It's going down
So next up was the trek from Indianapolis to Chicago, right? And this was an interesting trip. Even though I came down from Chicago originally, driving towards Chicago, I noticed more how desolate the northwest portions of the Indianapolis metro are when you leave the city limits. A lot of the suburbs are more north and slightly west, like Fishers and Carmel. But taking Interstate 65, once you leave the city limits of Indy, really, you start running into cornfields and it's kind of the middle of nowhere. It's beautiful. But as an East Coast guy, I'm not used to that seeing right when you leave the city limits, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, you're in cornfields. Usually there's some suburbs that, that take their way out. And the other thing about this drive was holy toll booths. There were so many tolls uh, when you get to the top of Indiana towards Chicago. And there's that Skyway, which I've heard about. I'm on a lot of different road tripping groups and I've heard about the Skyway. And it's just very interesting. I think I hit like two or three tolls in, in like a three mile period. It was crazy. Uh, and it's a beautiful drive, you know, driving up to Chicago and the south side. And it was very difficult and tricky to get on to I-90 and then get on the exit. I kind of merged on to I-90 and I had to slide over to the exit. So just an interesting uh, little uh, trek from Indianapolis to Chicago. So he here I was, a beautiful Sunday at Guaranteed Rate Field, a.k.a. Comiskey 2. Um, one of the knocks I will give against this ballpark is it was incredibly hard to enter the actual venue. Like the lines were long. They weren't really flowing that well. And then after you enter the venue, I had a 100 level seat. Most people were in the 100 level and they checked your ticket again. So and there's these very tight entryways into the 100 level. There wasn't like these open flowing into the 100 level. I was told by a, a White Sox fan that Connor F, who, who goes on my streams and, and is awesome, he said that after the pandemic, they started making these checkpoints to distance people, which I understand. But they're literally like these very tight arteries to get into the 100 level. And it took me 10 minutes to actually get access to the 100 level after I was already into the venue. And I think that needs to change. Listen, they're not getting 55 or whatever. They're not selling out this stadium. So there's a lot of empty seats up top. Most people have 100 level access. If anything, you, you make sure at every single stair into the actual bowl that you have people check tickets there. That's the better option. It gets everyone into the, the 100 level. They can buy food. They can buy beer, which they need that money, and then everything's good. But that's my biggest complaint about this venue. You, you have a double check. Check at the gate for your ticket and then check at the 100 level. That was a pain. Being a huge fan of ballparks, stadiums, and arenas, I know that the bad rap that this park gets is that it's not on the level of Coors Field and Camden Yards and Progressive Field. These are great uh, early 90s, mid 90s ballparks that really changed the ballpark game. Uh, but yes, the architecture is not as good for this ballpark. And I know they've had to, they've made a lot of improvements over the last, uh, I would say, 25 to 30 years here. But it's still, from a practical standpoint, watching this game at the, you know, right in between the bases, just at right before first base. Great sight lines, great views, plenty of food options, plenty of places for bathroom breaks. Also a kid zone out in left field. Yet other different activities for people to do during the game, which is important nowadays. So I will say as much as this venue gets a bad rap, yes, it's not the original Comiskey Park. That's, a, that's just an iconic uh, classic ballpark. It still gets people in and it gives them what they need to enjoy a baseball game. I think that's what matters the most is that it, it is has the modern amenities. They've upgraded this thing over the years. It's been upkept very well. The other thing, as a black baseball fan, I know that a lot of people, uh, as far as in the black community, don't watch baseball like they used to. But it was awesome. This is the most black people I've seen at a ballpark. And I've been to Atlanta. I've been to Baltimore. I go to New York. I'm a Yankees fan. I go to Fenway uh, every year for Yankees Red Sox. I've been out to the West Coast as well and down south in Miami. Um, and uh, this is the most black people I've seen. The south side was represented. Uh, awesome to see black boys and black girls, black fathers and black mothers 
at the ballpark in high numbers. Also a lot of Latinos and overall just a very diverse, friendly, open crowd that's supporting their team that is struggling, but they just are still there to support the, the local South Side uh, pride and joy which is the Chicago White Sox. So I thought that was special that you saw so much diversity. But again, as a kid who the bond between me and my grandfather to this day is about baseball. My father and I have gone to baseball games, and that's a bond. And all three of us, my father and grandfather, went to a Yankees game. It would probably be the most important game of my life because it was the first game with both my grandfather and father. So as someone who's seen the decline of black fans in many markets of baseball, it warms my heart to see black boys and girls, black mothers and fathers uh, here in the south side of Chicago watching baseball. So I did something very unique here. I actually stayed in Evanston, Illinois. It's right the first town north of the Chicago city limits. And I actually think this was one of the best decisions I made. I was able to be very close to Northwestern University and also be very close to this awesome, uh, you know, lakefront area on Lake Michigan. And I could get food easily. There was uh, Whole Foods. There was... Uh, tons of different places to eat both local and chains and it was much more quieter and laid back here than the hustle and bustle of the heart of the city so every day I could wake up and go for a jog I could wake up and go for a walk I could read in the park I was walking through the northwestern university campus just to enjoy the uh, the amazing architecture they have a huge uh, over 200 million dollar uh, athletic facility that was recently just built and is actually getting attention for football recruits uh, for Northwestern football. The field hockey team just won a national championship. They have a great field there, but it was great to be in Evanston for the actual spot I would stay in. Evanston has great access via public transit to Chicago. It's going to be about 35 to 40 minutes to get to the heart of downtown and Wrigleyville and other places in in the city but even so it's a laid back uh, train ride versus uh, you know having to drive in so you have the beauty of Lake Michigan and a little bit more of a less populated area you have beautiful homes and trees and shade and, and you have the wonderful university there but I was able to easily get to Chicago when I needed to get to Chicago and again I would highly recommend if you are going to Chicago and want a little bit more of a laid back spot if you have kids and want to just have a little more space not be in the middle of a city I would consider booking something in Evanston because again it's a great community it's I think Northwestern makes it a, a, a great place the students there the faculty there um, all the great homes on the lake it's just very beautiful and, and you have your own spot um, I think sometimes when you book something in a city, it's a little more congested. It's harder to get food, you know, getting a grocery store um, like a Whole Foods may be further away. And the metro stops here in Evanston, right by Northwestern, they're very convenient, too. They're within walking distance of many hotels. So, again, my recommendation as a first-time visitor to Chicago, uh, don't necessarily stay in the city. Uh, stay in Evanston. You'd be able to enjoy a nice community, and then if you have the day trip you can take the metro in um, and a day pass i believe was about five dollars for unlimited access for a day so yeah that's my my take there stay in evanston don't stay in chicago so i took the the train down to Ch downtown chicago very beautiful this is some video of me passing wrigley field and hey, maybe we'll come back to Wrigley a little later in this video. Wink, wink. Uh, but this was cool. You're just going down the tracks. And then all of a sudden, uh, after you pass all these different buildings, you see it. Wrigley Field, home of the Chicago Cubs. Go Cubbies, as they say. Um, there, so it's pretty cool to pass by uh, the, the neighborhood of Wrigleyville and see everything there. Uh, but again, the, I, I love public transit and I love taking uh, the, the, I guess, the subway or metro or whatever, the train, whatever you call it. It was really, really nice to be able to just sit down, relax, and know that with, you know, 35 minutes, I could get to downtown or Wrigleyville 
uh, as I please. And again, some nice scenic views, almost like a free tour of the city there uh, when you're taking public transit here. And then I got to see where Dave Matthews Band tour bus dropped a bunch of poop over the Chicago River, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. And this, uh, you see, I'm getting closer. I'm in downtown, but I'm getting closer to my next stop, which is Cloudgate. Now, this place is crowded, but it's really, really cool. Again, it's crowded, but it's really, really cool. Did I mention it's extremely crowded, but very, very cool. This is in Millennium Park. The day before this, they had a free um, orchestra performance uh, down there for the first time since the pandemic. So a lot of cool and fun things to do in Millennium Park. I didn't have a lot of time. Um, but it's funny that part see how it's crowded here um, on like this this but as I get a little uh, towards a different angle you're gonna see there's a little bit of a less uh, of a crowd in, in different at, at, at the kind of ends of this little cloud gate uh, sculpture or whatever it is it's a nice piece of art uh, but there was people more people are looking at this wider shot of the what I call the bean uh, here so tons of people here everyone's trying to take photos can you see me there can you see me maybe not right here again this kind of end of the bean nobody was here so this part is really cool too people should look at this but there weren't as many people here uh, as there were on the side like or the, the wide shot of, of the bean and again awesome seeing the the skyline behind you uh where i am now if i was to turn around you could go all through this beautiful park millennium park see some stuff there's your boy conservist 34 see and next i went to bartoli's and i had their deep dish pizza now this was out of convenience there's some better spots this is a top 10 spot here and if you're from the northeast like me you like that our pizza here we have that in connecticut this is totally different and the sauce is the more important thing the sauce is everything um and the, the the dough too but the sauce is really what fills you up it's very you know this pizza is very filling as is any deep dish pizza but this is your boy taking taking some some bites out of here i i love this deep dish pizza i still think the best pizza in the world and the best pizza on this side of the mediterranean is in new haven connecticut uh not too far from my home but um this is really cool to have some Bartoli's. If I go back again, I'm going to try some other spots that are like higher ranked on the list. But you do, I would ask locals, check on Reddit, check online, because some of these spots, they aren't really, t it's not top-notch pizza. Other spots are hidden gems or are top-notch pizza. And there is a difference uh, from what I was told from local Chicago dwellers that there, there's a huge difference between the top of the 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 charts in the middle and bottom of the charts for the best pizza in town but great food great pizza it's off the wrigley <clears throat> so i'm going to compare wrigley to fenway a lot because i am a diehard yankees fan that goes to fenway park every year because i love the the experience of going to a classic ballpark um so Wrigley is a little bit more of a bigger feel. You have that Grand Marquis. They're doing a lot of construction. Fenway was proactively upgraded to the 21st century. Wrigley, the Ricketts are cheap, and uh, they are doing this kind of at a at a deficit, right? This stuff should have been fixed 20, 30 years ago and been upgraded, but Wrigley is still building and expanding. But the interior of this ballpark is a little bit more of a dump than, than, than Fenway is. I love this Harry Carey statue, uh, a legend as far as in the announcing booth for the Cubs for so many years. Um, and uh, just a cool little statue. This area right here reminds me of Fenway Park as far as in this, you know, you have these the rooftops are different. That's the unique thing about that. But right here as we're walking uh, behind, this is left field. Just like Fenway, you have this overhang uh, above the, the first floor level, which is really, really cool. Uh, Wrigley blends in with the neighborhood again, which is cool about Wrigley and Fenway. Um, the rooftops there are very, very cool to see those in person. Um, they are closer to home plate than the scoreboard at Fenway Park is to, to home plate. So it's actually a really, really unique view and closer than some of the bleacher seats at Fenway. I will say the bleachers at Wrigley are so much more 
uh, superior to the bleachers at Fenway Park. There's a lot less bleacher seats, and all of them have a great view. All of them, you have a chance of catching a baseball outside of that upper level right by the scoreboard. Interesting that it's a GA bleacher, so people did line up early to get nice um, real estate there. I think they should have it assigned given the popularity of Wrigley. Uh, kind of odd that it's GA, but it all everyone kind of all shuffled in over various parts of the pregame and then during the game some people came late but traffic um, i was able to see batting practice really really cool to see some of the reds uh rip some balls down the power alleys and, and a couple of home runs uh for some of those uh reds players uh as well um i I stayed in my seat. It was kind of I could not access the bleachers. Another knock of Wrigley is you can't access the bleachers unless you have a bleacher ticket. But I think obviously they know people would want to all be there. Um, and this is just a really, really cool ballpark. Again, um, the the concourse and all that stuff, it, you know, not on the level of Fenway, although Fenway has its issues with concourse. But the, all the seats at Wrigley, there's not really everything is is uniform. So you don't have as many poles as Fenway. You, like even along the lines, you have a great view of the ballpark. Again, the bleachers are superior to Fenway. And the upper deck is an awesome uh, view as well. I, did, I sat in the lower level, but the upper deck has better sight lines than most of those seats at Fenway do. Because again, even though there's poles, this is more of a uniform, symmetrical type uh, feel. Uh, you know, that's really what makes Wrigley... I give Wrigley the edge as far as the seating because Fenway, there's so many more poles. They have the old seats uh, behind the poles that are blue and they can't change them. They switch them out. They have to make them bigger. They lose thousands of fans. So uh, just really, really cool to, to to be able to experience Wrigley. Great fans. Uh, they were supporting their uh, Cubs, even though they're kind of uh, in, a, in a tough spot right now and content, trying to, to, to make the playoffs. They probably won't. Uh, but great fans, uh, great crowd. I enjoyed the environment at Wrigley, and um, it was definitely an awesome, awesome time there. And Candice Parker from the Chicago Sky was the guest. She threw out the first pitch, and she also would sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game as well. We're going to look at that in just a second here, and we'll see Candice Parker have her moment at Wrigley for Take Me Out to the Ball Game. So that's going to do it for this second episode of this special vlog series of my DMB road trip. Where will I go next? Well, you guys will find out very, very soon with episode three. I think you guys will like that episode as well. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Definitely like, comment, subscribe. YouTube, ConcertViz34, same handle for Twitter and Instagram. I'll see you guys coming shortly with episode three. Peace. Rock